Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, here today for Wildlife Wednesday, where we're going to be talking about polar bears. Uh, my name is Brandon LaForest, and I'm a senior specialist of Arctic species and ecosystems at WWF Canada, uh, based out of Montreal. So my work at WWF is to uh, coordinate our work on Arctic wildlife, which uh, for us, our priority species are caribou, walrus, beluga whales, narwhal, bowhead whales, uh, and caribou, and of course, the polar bear. So here are some photos of me doing some field work and part of my work at WWF. Uh, in my work, I also work with northern communities on, on shared conservation priorities. And overall, we work to secure habitat protection and also ensure uh, viable uh, populations of, of wildlife in Canada's north. In, before I worked at WWF, I did some research on polar bears. So it's really exciting for me to, to talk to you guys about polar bears today. It's where I got my start as a, as a wildlife biologist and what led me to my career at WWF. And I love my job at WWF, and one of the best parts, of course, is getting to interact uh, with everyone uh, in platforms like this. So I know polar bears are, are one of the most popular animals that we, we talk about at WWF. We always get tons of questions, so we'll, we'll leave lots of room uh, for questions for you guys uh, today uh, to ask some questions. And aussi, uh, si tu veux poser tes questions en français, je peux essayer de répondre en français aussi. So, um, because uh, we get everything going, get a little exciting, I thought we'd start with a bit of trivia just to see uh, how much you guys know about polar bears, and then we'll get going with a bit of uh, some interesting facts you may not have heard about them before. So, if we have a bit of trivia, I believe we... Okay. So, comment uh, with your answers. And the first question is, which province or territory has the most polar bears in Canada? So out of all the provinces and territories of Canada, which one has the most polar bears? Do you think it's British Columbia, Prince Edward Island, the Northwest Territories? We have Manitoba as a guest, which is a very good guest. There are a lot of polar bears in Manitoba. Nunavut, Manitoba again. Quite a few guesses for Manitoba, but the answer is Nunavut. Nunavut has the vast majority of polar bears in Canada. In a minute, we'll see a map showing all of the, uh, the distributions of polar bears across the country. And you'll see that almost all of them are in Nunavut, but we do hear a lot about the polar bears in Manitoba, so those are all good guesses. All right, the next question before we get going with the presentation is how many cubs does a mother polar bear have at a time? The polar bears give birth to their cubs, uh, and how many does a mother polar bear have at a time? Give you a clue. It's between one and ten. How many cubs do you think a mother polar bear raises at once? Let's see your answer. One, two, or three. Two, one to two, two, two cubs. Elliot says two, one or two. Everyone's right. It's between one and three. So we'll talk a little bit more about how uh, it varies a little bit between the mother, but it's between one and three. Sometimes four, which is crazy, but uh, not too often. So the majority of the time, it's between one and three cubs. And we'll talk about how climate change is impacting that number as well. Okay, so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about some some facts about polar bears and, and maybe some facts you, you haven't heard yet because I know that everyone loves polar bears and there's lots of facts about them. One of my favorite facts about polar bears actually is why we call them what we call them. And it's not uh, universal that we call them polar bears. So in different languages, we call them different things and it's kind of a neat story as to how it all ties together. So in Norwegian, where they have quite a bit of polar bears in, in northern islands of Norway, they call them an isbjorn, which uh, translates to ice bear. It's the same thing in German, they call them an ice bear, which is ice bear. Uh, in France, they call them an ours blanc, which is a, a white bear. 
In Latin, it's an Ursus Maritimus, which translates into a sea bear. And then, of course, in English, we call them a polar bear. So if you put it all together, um, from those languages at least, we have a polar sea residing ice dependent white bear. And that really does kind of bring it all together as to what we think about when we think about polar bears. So it's interesting to see the different languages and how they, they come together. If you speak a, a different language than any of those, please put it in the comments what, uh, what polar bear is in another language. Um, it's always really interesting for me to learn and it'd be cool to see if we have any other, uh, any other uh, names for polar bears in different languages. So as you know, polar bears are uh, a bear species. They're the biggest bear species on the planet. And they're actually unique among the bears in that they're the only marine species. So we often think about polar bears as, uh, as being on land. We see photos of them all the time. But we need to remember that even when we see a picture of a polar bear on ice, it's technically a, a marine animal because it's, even though it's not below the ice, it is above the ice and it's technically in the marine ecosystem. So polar bears are unique in that they are very uh, marine, and thus we classify them as a, as a marine animal. Um, so I, I, to answer that question kind of of where polar bears are in Canada, we have a map here that shows you their distribution across the country. So you need to orient yourself that we're looking straight down at the North Pole, and we have Canada uh, on the left, and Russia and Europe over on the right. And what you see here are the different subpopulations of polar bears around the world. And polar bears are divided into 19 subpopulations, which are delineated based on the genetics of the polar bears and also the movements of the polar bears. So the polar bears all stick within their subpopulation, but they all contribute to a, a broader global population. And the global population of polar bears is roughly 26,000 animals, but it's a, a bit of a guess because there's lots of information we don't have, as you can see from this map here. Any of the subpopulations that are in uh, light gray are areas that we don't have a good accurate estimate of how many polar bears there are. Uh, the red subpopulations are ones that are declining and uh, the green ones are ones that are actually increasing. And then the blue ones are subpopulations that are staying stable. So as you can see, it's not a, a clear picture across uh, the range of polar bears in terms of what the population is doing. Some animals are going up, some populations are going down, some are remaining the same, and some we just don't know yet. So we always need to continue to gather more information. Um, but in Canada, polar bears are listed as a species of special concern which means that if we uh, don't act to preserve them, they may slide into that category of threatened. After threatened, they become endangered, and after endangered is extinct, which is a long ways down the road. But it's a species of special concern, largely because of the effects of climate change. And the effects of climate change are being seen in the North already, but they're gonna get worse and worse as time goes on. So it's for that reason that polar bears uh, don't have that endangered tagline that a lot of people think they have, um, but it's still very worrying. The latest uh, scientific projection is a, a decline by one third in the global population by, by mid-century. So uh, we're kind of creeping closer and closer. It's 2020 and we're talking about 2050 in terms of when that decline may happen. And as you saw in that last photograph, uh, there's four populations that are currently uh, declining. So I've been lucky in, in my work. I've gotten to work up close with polar bears and, and do some field work and collect some samples and, and do some studies. Uh, this is actually a photo I took. So I try to share a photo of uh, uh, from the field, a little unique. It's a mother bear that's sleeping um, from uh, and then uh, her two little cubs. And here's a photo uh, up in Churchill, Manitoba, where you guys have heard quite a bit of uh, about, it seems like, from all the Manitoba answers uh, where I was fortunate enough to lead a few uh, um, learning vacations and, and teach people about polar bears and teach people about climate change. So luckily I've gotten to see many, many polar bears in the wild, but I tell you, it never gets uh, less exciting when you see one and they're a beautiful animal and seeing them in the wild is, is amazing. If you ever get the opportunity, um, for sure take it. Though I think if you're turning into Wildlife Wednesday on polar bears, you are trying to see them in the wild one day and I hope everyone gets a chance to. Um, so what's important to remember about polar bears as well is uh, they have uh, a big place in the history and culture of uh, northern people. Uh, so quite a few indigenous groups, but largely uh, Inuit people who live in Nunavut and across uh, the circumpolar Arctic. 
Um, they interact and they live among polar bears and they play prominent uh, parts in the stories and culture and art and, and also in the subsistence harvesting as well of, of local people. Um, here is the carving I have, which is a bit heavy, but it's soapstone carving that you can really see the beautiful um, shape and art. I love this because you really see the distinctive feature of a polar bear that really tells it apart from a uh, another bear, like a brown bear or a black bear, it's this big, long, muscular neck, uh, which is really important for the bear when it's hunting, so it can grab seals out of the uh, the breathing holes that it catches them in. And also, it's really important because it's a marine animal. It has that longer neck. It can kind of use it as a periscope to keep its head above water when it's swimming. And I just love the way this bear is walking. It's beautiful. And above my shoulder, you can see another carving that's too heavy. I didn't want to take it down, but it's uh, it depicts more of an artistic rend rendition of a polar bear. So it's a polar bear uh, diving, and it's a little bit more of an um, uh, artistic view of polar bears versus uh, this one here, which is more of a kind of anatomically correct polar bear. So what is WWF doing for polar bears? Well, one thing we're, we really focus on is uh, an area called the Last Ice Area, which is uh, the far north of Canada and Greenland where summer sea ice will persist the longest in a climate change uh, scenario. So looking to protect areas like Tuvaluituk, which is a recent marine protected area announced by the federal government uh, to protect a large portion of the Last Ice Area. We also focus on protections for areas where polar bears have their babies. So it's uh, their denning areas where they give birth to and, and raise their cubs for the first few months. So it's really important those areas stay quiet. And you may have heard of that in the news relatively recently, uh, more so in uh, Alaska, uh, in the Alaska National Wildlife Refuge, where some of those areas uh, are gonna be open for development. So that's something that we work uh, to, to reverse. Uh, of course, we work as an organization broadly on climate change, mitigating the effects of climate change and arguing for, for better climate policy because ultimately uh, polar bears are, are not like gorillas where you can put a fence around their habitat and, and uh, protect their habitat. Their habitat is, is melting beneath their feet. So ultimately it comes back to, uh, to climate change. So we work at international forums to try and get good policy in there. And then really importantly, uh, polar bears, because they're spending more and more time on land in a changing climate, um, they find themselves getting into conflict with uh, people who live in the north, so in, in communities, which can be really dangerous for people and for the bears. Uh, this is a picture of a polar bear in the community of Arviat, just north of Manitoba in, in Nunavut. And WWF is really proud to work around the world, uh, employing local people and uh, setting up these polar bear patrols, which help keep bears and people safe. So all of that said, I'm sure there's a bunch of burning questions. So I'm going to uh, go into the uh, question box here and see if we can answer some, some questions. And I'm seeing here uh, Danish, Bjorn as well, also polar in Spanish, super interesting. I can't pronounce the Italian one, but it's really cool and even Serbian there. So thanks guys for, for sharing those. I'm definitely gonna look those up later. All right, so a question I have here uh, from Violet is do polar bears change color? And that's actually a really good question because a lot of Arctic animals, Arctic mammals rather do change color and even Arctic birds and because the system changes so much and you go from snow to a brown uh, more uh, summer, but polar bears uh, do not change color. So they stay white all year round. Uh, they don't change like an Arctic fox or a ptarmigan would change color, but a really good question. Uh, here is a question. How big are polar bears when they're born? And that's actually a really interesting question as well, because polar bears, when they're born, are about the size of an adult guinea pig. So they're quite small, and they're born completely pink and completely helpless, and they're born in a den uh, with the mother, and the mother doesn't come out of the den. She stays in the den with them for, for multiple months. And uh, it's when they're born, the polar bears immediately uh, start feeding off of the mother, and she gives them her milk. And polar bear milk is one of the most fat, heavy and milks uh, out there. It's really uh, a way of transferring 
the fat from the mother directly into the baby so that they can grow, grow and grow pretty quick. Because even by the time that they're around three months or four months old, they leave the den with their mother and go out and they need to be able to survive in the Arctic winter and grow their own polar bear fur. So uh, it's a quick uh, growing process for the young cubs, but they're born really quite small at uh, about the size of a guinea pig. Okay, we have a question here is, do you do anything for pollution and chemical accumulation? And that's a really good question for uh, the impacts that, that that has on polar bears. So um, there's quite a few studies that have been showing uh, buildup of, of chemicals from around the world through what's called the grasshopper effect. So chemicals making their way north, even though they do not come from the north, they come from the global south and they make their way into the north and accumulating in the tissue of, of marine mammals, especially uh, in the Arctic because of the way that the, the animals up there rely on fat and these chemicals accumulate in the fat of animals. So at WWF, we work on global policies when it comes to uh, chemicals and more on the ground, we work on pollution-based policies through uh, local cleanups to try and clean up uh, areas of the north and also with a, a lot of shipping work that we do in terms of trying to regulate the uh, things like gray water or things like uh, the emissions from ships, whether it's in the water or, or in the air, to try and keep the Arctic clean. A question here from Angela is, do polar bears need to hibernate? And polar bears do not hibernate the way that um, other bears or other species do. So female polar bears, when they're pregnant, they will go into a den and uh, to give birth to their young. And they stay in the den for around six months. And the bears are born after about two months. Um, but male polar bears actually never go into a den. They'll, they'll dig little day beds for themselves. And they'll have naps. And they'll relax uh, when they're waiting for the sea ice. But um, polar bears don't go into dens the way that, uh, or pardon me, polar bears don't hibernate the way that uh, other animals do. A question is, are polar bears aggressive? And the answer is yes, definitely. They're an aggressive animal. They're a very curious animal as well. Um, but uh, polar bears are aggressive. And it's one of the reasons that WWF is really proud to work in the north to try and uh, keep polar bears and people safe by keeping polar bears and people as far away as possible and uh, trying to prevent polar bears from coming into northern communities as, as, much, as, as much as you can. Um, you may have seen uh, last year that all the over the news that Russian village that was overrun with polar bears. So they weren't super aggressive. They were more just curious about what's going on, but all that to say they, they can be uh, quite dangerous. So you wouldn't want to encounter a polar bear um, out in the wild uh, on your own. There's not a lot of places to, to go on the tundra. Elliot would like to know, do polar bears have predators besides orcas? And even orca is a bit of a stretch because there's not too many orcas in the north, but they are going into the north a little bit more and more um, uh, as sea ice uh, declines. So for sure, polar bears are at risk of uh, being hunted by orcas. But other than orcas, no, polar bears do not have any other uh, natural predators. Okay, how do polar bears make their den? So uh, when polar bears uh, make their dens, it's actually pretty interesting. There's two different strategies. The first is if you live in, in the south. So if you live in uh, like Ontario as, as a polar bear or Manitoba or even parts of Quebec, um, you, you mostly build your den by digging a hole into the ground. So it's very mossy and it's a lot of dirt. And as the snow falls on you, so you're digging your den in October and the snow is starting to fall, uh, the, the den actually forms on top of you and you form it as it, the snow is falling and you build the den kind of on top of you. If you live further north as a polar bear, like in the Beaufort Sea or in uh, the Northern Islands of Canada, you dig actually into the snow as a polar bear and you make your den uh, that way. And then I'm just gonna take a look. Uh, Brooklyn asks, how old do polar bears get? And uh, polar bears in the wild uh, live to around 25 to 30 years if you're a female. So females live a little bit longer and the males have a, a bit of a tougher life uh, because they uh, they fight more amongst each other in terms of trying to, to breed with the females. So males typically live 20 to 25 years and females is, is 25 to uh, 30 years. 
the question from Cheryl, what is my most memorable polar bear encounter? And I'll use that as a segue to show you my favorite polar bear item, which is one of my favorite encounters, is this skull that I have actually, that I found uh, out on the tundra when I was doing work. So this polar bear had passed away years and years before I came across the skull and it was just on the tundra, just preserved. And you can tell it's an older bear because the teeth are quite chipped, the two big canines. But I love this skull because it's a beautiful uh, representation of a bear. And it shows you one of the most impressive parts of a polar bear, which is its nose. So if you look really close into the nose of a polar bear, you see all those nasal folds, which just show you the strength and ability of a polar bear to, to smell things. And polar bears can actually uh, smell seals from a kilometer away and approach the uh, the, the hole and, and wait to, to hunt them, the breathing hole. So I love that skull just because it uh, it's a beautiful skull, but it also shows that that uh, strength of uh, polar bears. And orso bianco in Italian, so like French, I guess, focusing on the the white. Thanks, Carla. Okay. Um, someone's asking if I've ever tasted polar bear milk, and I definitely have not. Uh, polar bear milk, I from what I from what I've heard, it's quite thick, and uh, I don't think it would be too tasty at all. But probably very tasty for polar bear cubs. Okay, so on that, I think we can move on and go to a bit of trivia to, to wrap things up. Um, if there's any questions, I'll try and take them uh, as we do some trivia, or if not, we'll go back and make sure we answer any questions that came up during the live that I may have missed, and apologies for that. So do some trivia and we'll answer a few more facts about polar bears through these questions. Okay, so comment below with uh, your, uh, your answers to these questions. So the first question is, what is a polar bear's closest living relative? So this is a question asking you to tell me what species, other than a polar bear, is the closest relative to the polar bear? I'll give you a clue. It's another bear. Do you think it's a black bear? A brown bear, a koala bear, a panda bear, seeing a vote for brown bear, seeing a vote for grizzly, which is the same thing. Brown bears and grizzly bears are the same animal at the, from the scientific perspective, with a bit of differences. And yeah, it looks like everyone pretty much getting this one right. So it's a brown bear. And really interestingly, um, they've only been different species. Uh, the estimates vary, but for about 150,000 years. And uh, they actually can still make babies together. So you can have a, a growler bear or a pizzly bear that's half polar bear and half grizzly. Great. All right. This one's to see if you were paying attention when I showed you that map. And the question is, which of these countries has no polar bears? So which of these countries does not have any polar bears inside of its borders? Uh, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, or the United States of America? Which of these polar bear, which of these countries has no polar bears? I'll just quickly answer a question. How long can a polar bear hold its breath? Thanks Antoine for the question. The answer is just a few minutes. So they actually stay above water most of the time. They don't swim around like a seal. All right, which country has no polar bears? The answer is Iceland. Yeah, so a few people guessed Denmark, which is a really good guess too, because it, there are no polar bears in, in mainland Denmark, in Europe, but Greenland is part of the kingdom of Denmark. So Denmark technically has polar bears. So a bit of a tricky one there. And even though Iceland has ice in the name, uh, there are no polar bears in Iceland. It's too far south. All right, true or false? Polar bears are excellent fathers. You can guess true or false, and if you want to give me your rationale, that would be interesting as well. So do you think polar bears are good dads? We have a question from Bruce, uh, who is asking if polar bears hang out in groups, and they largely don't. Sometimes they gather on the coast together, but uh, largely polar bears don't hang out in groups. They're on their own or just with their mother. 
Everyone's saying false, except I see one vote for true. Everyone's saying false. No one has any faith in polar bears as fathers, and you're all correct. They are terrible fathers. <laughs> they uh, have no interaction at all with their with their cubs. So uh, polar bears uh, mate, and then the mother goes off and months later gives birth to the cubs. And then the cubs never see their father, and the father never does anything for the cubs. So not the best father out there in the animal kingdom. Aaron Keenan, depends how you define it. That is true. Maybe they give them a good start. All right, last question. What is the word for polar bear in Inuktitut, which is the language of the Inuit people? So what is the word in Inuktitut uh, for polar bear? And there's many dialects of Inuktitut across, uh, across the world. So there's a few ways to answer this one. I'm just going to give you the most common answer. But does anyone know what we call polar bears in Inuktitut? And if you know what that means in Inuktitut, uh, that would, you can write that as well. We have a guess for Nanook, Nanook. Nanook, yeah, and even we can see in the answer, people have, have given a few different spellings and that's just a reflection of the, the different dialects that exist and the different spellings for polar bear. And I did a bit of research and Nanook uh, means various things from the ever wandering one, the one who walks on ice and the great white one. So interesting to add that to our list uh, of other languages in terms of how we what we call polar bears. But of course, no one knows uh, polar bears as well as Inuit people. So the ever wandering great white one who walks on ice is a, also a very good way of describing polar bears. Okay, thank you guys very much for tuning in uh, for Wildlife Wednesday. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I love talking about polar bears. And I know there's lots of questions. Um, so if we, uh, if you have any questions that weren't uh, answered, uh, we'll go back and make sure we answer them for you. Apologies if we missed them, but thank you so much for uh, tuning in and for participating. That was a lot of fun and hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon.